Okay, today we're going to take a look at some half angle formulas. These would be formulas that we would be using in trig. Um, we're going to take a look at just the one for sine, cosine, and tangent. Um, as you can see here, um, each of the formulas have a, has a plus or minus in front. All right. After we determine what our alpha angle is and then what quadrant that lies in, then that's going to tell us whether we need to use a positive or a negative sign in using this formula. Um, about the only thing I can tell you if you're trying to memorize these, if you there are some nice little patterns. If you write them in order, sine, cosine, and then tangent, you can take the numerator from the sine and formula, and you can take the numerator from the cosine formula, and then that creates your formula for your tangent. So there are some definite patterns in here if you are trying to memorize these formulas. Okay, now to uh, work out an example here, let's suppose that we are needing to find the exact value using a half angle formula, and they give us the cosine of 112.5. All right, now we are assuming no calculator, and we are assuming that we are going to use our unit circle at some point in time. All right, pulling up these formulas again, I've got the cosine here, so I'm going to need to pick the cosine formula right here. All right, now this is a single value right here, and this is showing alpha divided by 2. I need to find out what that alpha angle is, all right, and I can do that by writing an equivalent statement. Okay, so in other words, I can say that the cosine of 112.5 degrees is the same thing as the cosine of what angle divided by 2? All right, well, so it's a matter of taking 112.5 times 2 to get our alpha up there. It's going to be 225 degrees. All right, so from there, I can say, therefore, my alpha is 225 degrees. All right, that's going to be crucial for when we get to the part where we have to plug values into the formula. All right, now I've got to decide whether I'm going to use the positive or minus sign right there. Okay, you can do that by doing a quick little sketch and determining which quadrant 225 degrees is in. You do not have to be really accurate. You just need to know what quadrant. All right, so if I start here and I work my way around, 225 is going to be somewhere in this third quadrant. Okay, so there's our 225 degrees. You've got to make sure that you are using your af um, alpha angle to determine which quadrant you're in. All right, if you recall, any ordered pair in this quadrant is going to be minus minus, all right, because it takes negative to go left, takes negative to go down. And then if you also recall with trig, the x coordinate of an ordered pair along a circle or a unit circle would be cosine. Your y value there would represent your sine, okay? All right, so I'm doing cosine. I know I'm in the third quadrant, so I'm going to have to use the negative part on that formula in front of the square root. All right, so now that you've determined all that, you know, you've determined all that, you've determined your alpha, you've determined your quadrant, now you're actually ready to start using the formula. So we're going to use formula, we're going to plug everything in, and then it'll just be a matter of arithmetic to simplify. All right, I am going to rewrite the formula here. Cosine alpha divided by 2 equals, and we've already determined that it needs to be negative because of what quadrant I'm in, so I'm just going to go ahead and put the negative there. Square root of 1 plus cosine alpha all over 2. Okay, so there's my formula. I know alpha, <clears throat> and I've chosen the negative right there. I'm going to plug in 225 into my formula so I can start to work it out. 1 plus cosine 225 all over 2. Okay, now here again, I do not want to use a calculator to come up with that 225 uh, cosine of 225 degrees, I want to be able to go to my unit circle. So I'm going to go to my unit circle. 225 degrees is right down here. I can look at the ordered pair on my unit circle. All right, I'm needing the cosine, which is negative square root of 2 over 2. Okay, so I'm going to replace that value for that. Negative on the outside square root 1 plus a negative square root of 2 over 2 all over 2. All right, now what I've done is I've now created a complex fraction right here, and I need to um, simplify that. All right, the best way to simplify a complex fraction would be to multiply through by the least common denominator. All right, least common denominator is going to be that 2 right there, so I'm going to multiply the numerator by 2. I'm going to multiply the denominator by 2. And what's that going to do is it's going to get rid of that complex fraction for us. All right, coming up here, I can now simplify. I still have a negative out in front, my square root. When I distribute this 2 right there in the numerator, I get a 2, I should say minus as opposed to a plus negative. I get 2, and then the 2's right here is going to cancel, minus square root of 2, all over 2 times 2, and that denominator is going to be 4. All right, now if you remember, um, 
a great big radical, how you can simplify some radicals, I can separate this into a little radical on top and a little radical on the bottom. All right, so I'm going to do that to do some more simplifying. So I've got uh, the square root of 2 minus the square root of 2 on my numerator. All right, and then square root of 4 on the bottom. All right, square root of 4 on the bottom there is going to work out to be a nice little 2. So I have an overall final answer of negative square root of 2 minus square root of 2 all over 2. All right, so that is the value for a cosine of 112 degrees 0.5. All right, without using the calculator. Now, let's take a look at a, another example. We'll do a sine example. All right, let's suppose we've got the sine of 75 degrees. All right, so we're going to start the process all over again. I need to determine that alpha. So I'm going to have to rewrite. I've got the sine of 75 degrees. I want to rewrite that into an equivalent statement for sine of some number divided by 2. I can take 75 times 2, that's going to give me the 150 right there. So from there, I can conclude that my alpha is 150 degrees. All right, now I'm going to, in that formula, I've got to determine uh, whether I need a positive or a negative on that, so I'm going to do a really rough sketch. I'm going to figure out what quadrant alpha is in. All right, 150 degrees. Coming up here, I'm going to be in the second quadrant somewhere. All right, again, we don't need to be really, really precise on that. We just need to know about roughly what quadrant we're in. So there's my 150 degrees. Okay, looking at the ordered pair here, all right, every point in the second quadrant is negative positive because I had to go to the left and then up. All right, that first x coordinate right there represents my cosine. The second one represents my sine. Okay, so this one, I'm using sine. I'm in the second quadrant. I'm going to pick the plus sign out of the formula. All right, so now we've got everything we need. We've got our alpha, we've got our sine, so we can go straight to our formula and plug things in and then simplify it algebraically to work it out. I'm going to rewrite the formula here just so we have something to look at. Sine of alpha over 2 is going to be equal to, I determined, positive. So I'm going to leave it positive. The square root of 1 minus <coughs> cosine of alpha all over 2. All right, so there's my formula. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and plug in alpha. In my next step, 1 minus cosine of 150 degrees all over 2. Very big square root right on top of the entire thing. All right, I'm going to pull out the unit circle. I'm going to go over to 150 degrees. I'm going to look at that ordered pair. All right, I'm needing the cosine value, which is the first one. It's a negative square root of 3 over 2, so I can replace that inside there. 1 minus a negative square root of 3 over 2, all over 2, great big radical there. Okay, again, I've created a complex fraction, so I'm going to multiply through by my least common denominator. To get rid of that complex fraction, my least common denominator is going to be a 2. So I'm going to multiply the numerator by 2, I'm going to multiply the denominator by 2. All right, I'm also minus a negative right there. I'm also going to turn that into a plus plus in my next step to simplify there. Okay, continuing to simplify here. I distribute that 2 in my numerator, so I'll have a 2, the 2's here is going to cancel, plus square root of 3, all over 2 times 2 is going to give me a 4. Alright, again, I've got one great big radical over the entire thing. Alright, simplifying with radicals means I can break that radical up. So I'll have in the numerator, square root of 2 plus square root of 3, all over the square root of 4, and the square root of 4 we can simplify down to a 2. So final answer will be the square root of 2 plus square root of 3 all over 2. Alright, so the sine of 75 degrees is equivalent to this and we arrived at that using our half angle formulas.